All right, welcome everyone to another podcast of Ray Maroon Files. It is I, Entropy, coming back to you. You can also call me Alan if you want. Today, I have a very special guest of one of the most successful fighting game players in the Philippines. It is Arbalest's Alden. Hello, Alden. Uh, hello, guys. So, he, he was able to provide me a schedule. One of the few instances that scheduling was easy. So, thank <laughs> you for that. Uh, big deal. It really is a big deal. But, all right, so... Uh, I guess it's no secret that fighting games are, are kind of obscure, so we're going to have to mm. run a bit of an introduction for you. And this is a series where we will be having a closer look on the people within esports, all them being one of them, so that we can have a more nuanced look on our, uh, on our stars, on, uh, on the people representing us across the shores, so to speak. All right, so what every, what every Filipino asks, mm-hmm. saan so, I was born in Legazpi City, Albay, in the Bicol region. And I grew up there until I'm, I turned to... Until elementary and uh, I started going to high school here in Manila. Oh! Yeah. So, high school straight through college, Manila? Yeah. Which school did you, uh, did you go to college to? Uh, I went to San Beda College uh-huh. in Menjola. Now, I think it, now it's San Beda University. Yeah, it recently turned into a university. Yeah. And uh, your course was? Um, Bachelor of Science Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. So, mm-hmm. is that, that's, that's kind of another way of saying business management or? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's more of, I guess, starting new businesses maybe. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. entrepreneurship. All right. So, entrepreneurship, fighting games. How did that happen? How did you find the fighting game community? Uh, I was just curious. I was 20 back then. Uh, yeah. It was just a random day. But even before then, I was a fan of Guilty Gear and uh, Blaze Blue. Yeah. I do watch their uh, the Japanese play. But I was thinking to myself, I could never play like this, you know. Mm-hmm. Until my sister's classmate introduced me to Jello. Okay. And... I PM Jello and he invited me to Casuals and that's how it started. All right, so you were in the university belt and somebody just clued you in to uh, to Blaze Blue PH basically. Yeah. The the, or, the organization for Blaze Blue. Yeah, but by the time I met you, that was you were twenty at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, how old are you now? Sorry. Uh, I'm twenty seven. Twenty seven now. Seven yeah. years of, of so that's when you're. That's kind of where you started your journey. Mm-hmm. Seven years in. All right, so. Uh, which games are you taking on professionally? Um, right now, I'm joining tournaments for Dragon Ball Fighters, mm-hmm. uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, and yeah, so far that's it. But I also plan to play Grand Blue Fantasy Versus ah, as it when comes, it comes out. out. Yeah, I see. Right, so I guess it's a, it's, I guess it really is a thing for competitive players to, to to take on the new titles because they're probably the ones who's going to get support. Yeah. All right. So, by the time I met you, you were already kicking my ass. So, <laughs> so the, the, the skill wasn't much of a question to me. Like, it was viable. But what convinced you that it was that you should try to, t- try to compete? Um, back then, competing locally was just uh, something to do during weekends. Because uh-huh. I, enjoy, I enjoyed playing Blaze Blue back then, right? So... When I joined tournament, it's just, hey, le- I want to see what I learned. Okay. The moment I wanted, uh, I noticed that I, I might get far in this endeavor is during Southeast Asia 2015 in Thailand. Okay. I placed fifth place in the Blaze Blue tournament there. And I noticed that I kept improving as time goes on because Southeast Asia Majors 2014 I wasn't even able to reach top 8 then in 2015 I was able to reach top 5 okay so you landed the, you, you got into top 8 yeah, yeah you got into top 8 basically yeah and wait did you lose to a Tager again? Hmm. <laughs> was it a Tager? because I saw one of your interviews yeah. and it was like, is like the bane of your existence well right now not as much because I actually used Tager for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, but in uh, I think I lost to James Shea 
Mm-hmm. The I think he was one of the best platinum players in the US. Yes. And yeah, after the year after in uh, 2016, the Southeast Asia Majors, that's when I won. Yeah, and you and you didn't just win, did you? <laughs> yeah. I also cried like a <laughs> <laughs> You get, get, All right, you you once told me. You once yeah. told me that uh there is a huge difference between first place and second place yeah especially when you're the one who's lost mm. cuz uh the frustration is just keeps building up it it's just all that much greater when you're that much closer to the top but you didn't yeah. quite make it exactly so i suppose like 2015 2000, three years three years of deciding that you take on the challenge you'd prepare for it mm-hmm. you know it, I mean of course that's not all you did but that's a that's a commitment that's a three year commitment that you finally made it and not yeah. only did you make it that far I rem- I remember that you you got particularly emotional about it because you didn't just beat anyone Yeah I it was June and the reason I I was scared back then is the year before Southeast Asia Majors 2016 Mhm June kicked my ass like, I remember that too I couldn't <laughs> win a single match So being able to win against him in 2016 really showed that I improved. Okay. Mm. Yeah, he was I remember yeah because I was part of that trip too. Uh, yeah. He kept complaining about how you play. <laughs> like really? like uh like you don't know how to play uki. I, uh, yeah. you have habits that you don't realize that you that you never break. Mm. Stuff like that. He kept trying to give you pointers on how to play yeah. better. So The fact that you you know like he was kind of a master to you I guess like yeah. a sensei to you. and then next year you actually beat him that must have been huge yeah really huge well I'll get back to more of that later because mm-hmm. there's other questions I'd like to ask you well from well, from when you were twenty years old so that you decided you got involved with a fighting game community that are twenty uh, years old five years later you're a, you're in another country fighting for your country yeah right so what's the biggest differences that you noticed between uh 20 old year old you versus C major competitor you. Hmm. Well, when you're starting and you know you're the underdog, right? Yeah. You don't really care about winning as much. You also don't really care about losing as well. You just want to play, right? Uh-huh. But the moment you get better at something, you don't want to you always want to keep improving. So you tend to put a benchmark on yourself. I have to do this in this tournament. I cannot not oh. reach top eight. All you right. kind of put pressure on yourself. Okay, so let me try to put that into uh, finer words. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you seem to be saying is, uh, all right, let's start from the casual person. Yeah. A casual, a casual person will consider winning against another an opponent to be to be what we say uh, getting a set. Mm-hmm. Right, you get two rounds, you actually won. Yeah, but you don't seem to be thinking that way. You say you have goals. What do you mean by that? I just wanna be. I just wanna play the best I can. Like I just wanna place as high as I can in any tournament I join. All right. And that's pretty much it. Like right now, that's my goal. I just wanna be the best. So, uh, you wanna be the best. Like you always wanted to get the first place. Mm-hmm. kind of thing yeah or or uh well the way it's coming across him because you said goals like maybe improvement so maybe uh it doesn't have you don't have to win tomorrow mm. but tomorrow you have to be in a better place than you are now yeah exactly you have to imp- always improve all right so let's say uh yeah you like for example you you couldn't win against the tiger at all mm. like a like a proper tiger at all Uh, you decided to take that path to actually understand Tiger in a way that you can actually take him on. Yeah. Right. So maybe that's uh, instead of just seeing it as a tournament win, you were able to win against yourself. Mm. You know, in a way, it's like it's, it's kind of like self improvement advice, I guess. Yeah. All right. So. So do you think that's a that's really the the pro way of thinking? Like. Well, everyone has their own way of thinking. Everyone has their own approach, so I think that's just my approach. I mean, some other guys can maybe think the same, mm-hmm. but 
yeah, that's how I approach things. I just wanna keep improving. When I lose today, maybe I'll win tomorrow. I'll try to win the next time. And when I lose again, I'll just try again the next time. Alright. Until yeah. I win. Alright. Out in the pro gamer, like, did you ever imagine that you'd be one like, uh, you were, you were from Bicol. You mm-hmm. come, you came here for school, and you graduate entrepreneurship. Did you, did you think that that was? Did you imagine that? This is where you'd be going like years from that time. Well, back then I could never have imagined, but I do. I did kind of wish it did because when I was a kid, I tried to visualize like, what if this game I'm playing has a tournament? That would be so cool. Mm-hmm. And you know, right now I join tournaments actually. So you could say it happened. It came true. My childhood dreams came true. Like, was it because you were? You were placing regularly. You were no, actually, by the by two thousand fourteen, you're almost always first place. Mm-hmm. You were you were fighting with uh, with one one other guy. Insan. Yeah, you were yeah. fighting with one. I was I was thinking Ehada. No, that's the team name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, you were fighting with Insan. Like it was either you or Insan on top for Blaze Blue at least. Yeah. Uh, other games might be different. Like for Guilty Gear, it's either it's Tux, it's Tux or Drake and Shinji. Yeah, those three. Yeah. Like it, and it's not really a surprise. I mean, I'll say it doesn't it doesn't diversify. But what mm-hmm. can you do? These guys are the these guys are doing well. They're improving all the time. Yeah. And uh, nobody else is. I remember the time when we were in, uh, when we were in uh, Thailand. Mm. Like, I kind of scolded, I kind of scolded the, the 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 players, because none of them were recording matches. Um, and this was the first time they were fighting internationally. Yeah. So like I, I couldn't understand why didn't why they didn't see the value in that when they watch match vids on YouTube all the time, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess there's a, a bit of a difference when it comes to being pro. Yeah, but I mean, everyone has their own approach, right? So yeah, maybe some people just learn better by playing and yeah. not watching. So yeah. Well, it I guess it, on the... maybe it's a different pace because. Uh, from my experience, from what I've seen people do, like when people that review their matches seem to improve the most, because mm-hmm. they actually watch themselves play themselves, uh, play badly. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it hurts to watch it. Yeah, it, <laughs> if you're the, it hurts to watch it, but you gotta face the truth. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I know how it feels so much. <laughs> like uh, yeah, I remember telling you once that you then like once you have like twenty five percent life, you panic. I remember you know, when uh, before you were flying out, mm-hmm. like I told you that once, like you, uh, you shouldn't panic even if you have a pixel of life. Yeah, and I'm not sure. Like you were trying to find a way to get around that. Mm-hmm. Like, but looks like you did, considering where you are now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so pro gamer. So first, thing was asked asked you mm-hmm. how you felt about it. So when did you throw the idea to your mom? Uh, after I won Southeast Asia majors. In 2016. All right, so, uh, she back then like you just you just did that on your own, not really without really telling your folks. Uh, actually, my mom went to Singapore with me back then. Uh huh. But she didn't watch the tournament. She oh. just she got surprised that I won. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, after that win, that's when I told her I might continue playing because. 2016 was also the year that I graduated. Okay. So that was also the year when I was thinking which path I might choose. Uh, so you're in a proverbial fork in the road. Yeah. So when I won the tournament, that's when I realized that this is what I want. I want to play. I want to keep playing. Okay. I'm, I want to see where I can go with this, you know? So yeah. So, and so it was more of an obvious answer to you, but you didn't consider like uh, trying a regular like most of us or mm-hmm. most. Uh, I mean, what I do is uh, I kind of keep a normal job while yeah. trying to make all this content because uh, I'm not sure if this is gonna sustain, right? Yeah. So did you ever try like? I actually did in uh, 2017. I uh-huh. entered a franchise association. Uh huh. And. It was nice. I spent like six months, but the schedule wasn't really to my liking because it was Monday to Saturday, 8 to 5. So if I was gonna continue that on that path, I might have to sacrifice 
gaming. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to do that yet. It's still too early. Not quite ready for that for that shift. And yeah. it looks like, I guess, uh, in a way, you can say that the iron is hot for you. Mm-hmm. So you got to strike it. So, because, yeah. you know, this isn't a very common uh, opportunity for people. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I guess you recognize that the most. Mm-hmm. So, so how did how did your family react? Like, really? Like, was it like that or? Back uh, then, they were like, ask, they kept asking me if when I'm going to look for a job. <laughs> But then when I sat and told them that I want to play seriously, mm-hmm. they just supported me. Really? Yeah. Because, you know... The, I actually the... got surprised as well. Like, fine, you do what you want. So long as... So all you really had to do was, like, fess up. Like, yeah. You had to gather your courage. Because, mm. you know, we, we hear the stories all the time. You know, like, uh, no, they don't understand that kind of industry. They don't understand that that's a market. Yeah. Right? So, uh, so you were shocked, I guess. Yeah, that they were, like, they were, like, pretty chill with the idea. Hmm. The thing is, hmm. How should I put it? They did kind of have a, not really a violent reaction to it, but they were kind of skeptical. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's just what I wanna do, because coming from entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. Starting a business is a big risk. So, in life, I kind of got that mindset that. If you want something to happen, you, do, you shouldn't be afraid. Don't take the safe path. Uh, you got you commit. You commit. You to commit the action. and see what see what happens, and you adapt. All right. Right. So gaming to me is kind of like a business. Well, not really a business in the normal sense that you trade things, right? Mm-hmm. It's more like a. I know it's risky, but. If it's what my uh, if it's what my soul wants, yeah, yeah, I just do it. So, so you know, it's not it's not exactly an eight to five thing. Yeah, right. But so far, the satisfaction you're getting out of it is making it all worth it for you. Re- it's really worth it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't see any, I don't see myself doing anything else at this point in time, other than compet uh, competing. And you know. If, So if you're gonna, if that's all you're really serious of doing, like, what steps are you taking to make sure that you're on top of your game? Mm. Well, right now I just watch uh, match vids, a lot of match vids, uh-huh. and I try to play casuals at least once a week. And sometimes I play in training mode for like thirty minutes, one hour, mm-hmm. just to exercise my fingers. Okay. And I also try to go to the gym to keep myself fit because last year I uh, I kind of la- I was I got careless. And... Okay, let's just say you look a lot better now than you did then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got I kind of got careless there. Uh, at least I, it's in control now, right? Yeah. And mm. yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, spend time a lot uh, a lot of time with my family. Mm, okay. yeah. That's good. So uh, family is like super important, like wherever, of course. whatever you're doing. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So you've been you've been going at it for for so long. Mm. Uh, you, I guess it's safe to assume that you were pro since 2015. I would say I went pro in 2017. 2017. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I guess you're putting your you're just testing the waters. And then when you can see that you could actually pull off results, mm. like time to go pro, right? Actually, even if I didn't put in results, I would still try. Like really, yeah. Because oh. um, you know that uh, when you're starting something, it's not like you'll be good at it, right, from the start. Yeah. So if you want something and you're not good at it, you just keep at it. Even if you yeah. lose, you just. Keep at it. You, you, that, that's exactly what a fighting gamer would say. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's exactly. Yeah, because uh, you know, like all of us started out as probably at button measures. Mm. Probably. I mean, I did. Yeah, yeah I did myself. Yeah, uh, Tekken Eddie. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Quarter Circle X. Yeah, that's the game. That's the game. Yeah. 
and and then you know you, you finally meet people that know what they're doing, and then you but you want to keep playing at it. Actually, uh, tell you the truth, mm-hmm. uh, when the BB tag patch landed, like okay, fantasy, let's see what it's like. I thought I was just gonna play it online for like thirty minutes. Yeah. I started at like 11 p.m. and I fell asleep at around 4:30 a.m. because <laughs> mm. I found somebody that actually knew how to play, like really knows how to play, and I and I have no idea how to play. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah, of course, combos, yeah, of course, uh, special moves, that kind of stuff, usual uh, things. But the tag system of BB tag is really different. Yeah, it's really unique. It's really unique, and I was getting my ass handed to me because I didn't know what to do. Mm. Like, uh, I'm trying to do cross burst. And I'm getting punished for it. I thought that was the free. Co- I thought that was an escape. Yeah. Apparently not. It can get countered. Like, <laughs> I, I think out of a hundred, let's say out of a hundred or so sets, I got seven wins. And huh. it was bloody fun, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, losing isn't really that bad, you know. It depends on how you take it. Yeah, uh, I like. I, well, well, we we're exposed to fighting games, so it's more like, you know, I managed to get to get out of that setup. I managed to. I managed to whittle them down to this health. Yeah, that's something, man. Yeah, you, small you, goals. Yeah, you, you have to, you have to put steps towards your goal. Yeah, against the ultimate win. All right. So, uh, okay. So officially, you're pro for two years. You've been playing for. You've been playing competitively for maybe seven. Mm. What What would you say at the moment are your greatest achievements with your career? For now, being able to travel a lot. Like, mm-hmm. I've been to a lot of different countries for the past two years. Uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Japan, US. Mm-hmm. And for me, that experience is uh, it's priceless. Meeting new people. Uh, yeah, meeting new people, also... seeing the different cultures, trying all the different kinds of food that you wouldn't be able to try here. Uh-huh. It's really great. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Sounds like you're, you'd be writing a travel book soon. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll be uh, looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do enjoy traveling as well, you see. And right. being able to travel while playing is a really good bonus. Yeah, I would say. Mm. Like, all right, of all, the places, like, of all the places you visited, like, which one, I guess, was like, the biggest culture shock to you? Japan. Japan? No doubt, yeah. Like, right, well, like... <laughs> Okay, they drive on the other side of the road. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you, it's hard to speak Japanese fluently. But what, what else? What else did you find so strange? Everyone or... is so disciplined. The food is, the quality of food is, everything is as as best as it can be. I see. Yeah, even the convenience store food is of really good quality. Really? Yeah. Convenience store food, like versus our convenience store food. It's not a contest. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm just speaking the truth. It's not a contest. <laughs> Dang. But, but, uh, but I heard that the, the price speaks for itself when it comes to... Like, I heard food was really expensive in Japan. Yeah, the cost of living is a bit more expensive, I, I, had, I have to say. But yeah, it's a really big culture shock for me, especially coming from the Philippines. You know, crossing the road is so chill. Mm-hmm. I don't have to fear for dear life. And yeah, that's why I want to go back. Actually, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, for a person that's uh, that's focused on comp- on competition, mm. I wasn't expecting that you'd consider traveling as your biggest achievement. I was expecting that you'd talk more about your your victories of recent, like for example, uh, Manila Cup or uh, or winning C Major. Or even beating infiltration once, because I know that happened. No, uh, not infiltration. Was it? Go, was it? Goichi. Goichi. Yeah. You be- well, oh, so you fought infiltration, but you beat Goichi. Okay. I have. I don't think I fought infiltration yet. For real? Yeah. This, Maybe, see, this is why I was looking up a record to find yeah. out, right? Because he didn't want to, like, I don't know, watch the interview. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so but Goichi is still quite a name. Mm. So, uh, like. Uh, I'd like to like. How did you get there? How did, and what was it like fighting him? Man, it was really scary. Like, the same thing doesn't work at him twice. Is that is is, is that he unique to Goichi? Really good. Or do you think do you think it's uh, you see that more with Japanese players? I see that more with Japanese players actually. 
they're so good at adapting. Mm-hmm. They don't usually do the same thing twice as well. I mean, people here also do that, but for them, it's really weird. Like, they try to read your read. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they they try to think like two steps ahead of you. Yeah. Okay. It's really it's really fun to play with them. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for. It's it's quite strange because you'd say, you'd think a normal person would think that mm. uh, a competitive player would be frustrated with people he has trouble with, mm? but but you know like uh, people that give, that give him that would give you issues on actually winning because uh. as a competitive player like your ultimate goal is to win. Like, actually, no, I don't really agree. Really, all right. Yeah. Why don't you? Share? As a competitive player, your ultimate goal is to improve. And winning is a byproduct of improving. So winning just comes when you improve. I see. So I guess that that, that sounds a lot like the uh, Daigo, right? Daigo, yeah. yeah. That sounds like a lot like Daigo wrote back yeah. then. Because actually, that's how I managed to reading his book made me realize realize a lot of things. Oh, well, we're gonna get to books. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, because there's two things I'd like to ask you about that, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, so getting back to Goichi for a bit, like uh, so you you were you found fighting fighting him scary and uh, if you mentioned that Japanese players are super adaptable, mm-hmm. is he particularly much better than most at that? Mm. Not really. I think the Japanese players their levels are quite similar. Okay. Because the thing with Japanese players is. They share all the texts with each other, uh, hoping to improve the whole community, not just themselves. Okay. So, when I improve, everybody improves. So, when you beat me, I have to improve as well, right? Okay. That's how they all become strong. Yeah. I mean, uh, they, think com- they think in terms of the whole community, not for themselves. You know, Gina you know, told me once that if I ever ended up in Japan... Mm. And I go to an arcade. A hundred random people will beat my will beat me, no problem. Yeah. And I have to get used to it because that's how it is there. Like, yeah. would you agree with that? Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> sounds scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I was playing in uh, in ca- during casuals, mm-hmm. every fight felt like a grand finals fight already. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's yeah. how intense it was. All right. So, considering how that how scary that was, like mm-hmm. how. It sounds like a huge wall to, to go up against. Mm. How did you muster the strength to beat that? Well, by strength to beat that, you mean the motivation? Oh, well, maybe. Like, you, you, you pulled through in the end, right? So, I guess motivation is one, but grit or maybe the guts to actually, you know, not get intimidated too much, actually yeah. play up the top of your game? Because, you know, playing in Japan made me feel like I was new to the game again. Uh-huh. Um, back when I was just starting Blaze Blue, everyone was uh, beating me up here. Like, I would go to a, a single day of casuals, I would go to one of them and not win a single round. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not as uh, drastic as that when I went to Japan, but I kind of felt the same way. Like, I have so much to learn. And for me, that's really good because... Um, here in Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. I can pretty much fight most of the top players here already. Okay. Um, but in Japan, it's our level is still uh, average, or maybe more than average, but still average, right? But not not quite competitor banner level, huh? Yeah. All right. So knowing that you still have a lot to improve on is a really good feeling, actually. So you know the. I guess you, in a way you can say like uh, you felt like you're you're in the room of the Philippine fighting game scene. Mm. Then you open the door like it's a much bigger world out there. Not yeah. Too. And is that a good way of describing it? Yeah. So like. It's kind of like Dragon Ball, you know, <laughs> Namek Saga and going to the Android Saga. It's everyone stronger, you know. <laughs> That's actually I'd watch that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the people that you were able to play casuals with? Uh, Galileo. Kaimato, uh, B, mm-hmm. and uh, Tahichi. I actually fought Tahichi in tournament in the uh, Fighting Tuesdays. 
Really? Yeah. Uh, what was he using at that time? If I remember correctly, it's Android 21 Vegeta. I forgot the other one. <laughs> and who else? Uminchu. Actually, there are a lot. I just can't remember all of them. Alright, so I'm going to mix this up a bit. Mm-hmm. Since we're talking about people uh, quite a bit, you know, the, when you when you visit the fighting game scenes, especially the ones you do, yeah, you, I, uh, would it be an exaggeration to say that you find yourself standing on the shoulder, shoulders of giants? Not really, because going into a match, yeah, if I like look at them from a lower standpoint, like I look at them like I'm below them, mm-hmm. it would really affect my play. So, going into a match, I just think of my opponent as my equal. Like, okay. we're standing eye to eye, I'm gonna beat you. You know. And if you, and if you beat me, I'll, I'll figure out how to do how yeah. to beat you next time. Yeah. Kind of thing. Oh, that's a... So, you, you know, name name's nothing when you're in the match. Yeah. That's, I mean, it should be. <laughs> yeah, but that that's not as easy to achieve, I think. Not yeah. that, that, I mean, it sounds simple, but... It's not actually. <laughs> it's not. Subconsciously, you still think, "Oh, I'm fighting Kazunoko. I'm screwed." But yeah, I you, you I still try not to think that. But so you know, you, you try your best not to think about it because in the end, it's two guys and two controllers. Yeah, kind of thing. And you might end up overthinking some some things, you know. All right, but uh, you know, you uh, we you meet all these big name people, like all mm. these people that have quite a reputation in the community. Uh, do you have any of them? Do any of them are? Uh, uh, do you idolize any of them? Um, yeah, I, some of them I do, like Galileo, Kazunoko, you know the top guys. Yeah, well, Galileo and his Blaze Blue Run at Evo was one of the best things I've yeah. ever seen. You know? uh, it was literally anime. Mm, <laughs> yeah. literally, like the guy that astroed him, and then he goes for a five set. Mm. And you, and you and you never thought he'd actually kill him like man that was quite this okay for those listening I'll, I'll give you the link <laughs> watch it it's the yeah. best even the commentators are so in on it anyway uh, so Galileo Kazunoko mm. like what about them do you find so admirable I don't know they just they always play at their best whenever I see them mm-hmm. and they're just so consistent. Like, one of these days, I want to be like those guys. As consistent as those guys. So it's more, it's more about their, their, uh, their ability to perform rather than per- their personality. Yeah. Because so, okay. I don't really know them that much aside from how they play. Okay. Yeah, Kazunoko, like, I first know, knew about him back, in, back when, Super, when SBO was still a thing, mm-hmm. right? And I recognized him as Order Soul. Yeah. And he just changes up wh- whoever he feels like is the best character of that game. Mm. So uh, that's, that's a testament to how flexible he is as a player. Yeah. And uh, I think Galileo is kind of the opposite. Yeah, he just sticks to Laichi. And he makes it work. He yeah. just makes it work. Like, that's a, those, are, that, those are pretty interesting uh, contrasts to people you look up to. Mm. Well, for Galileo, I can, I look up to him because of how you can see his raw passion. Mm-hmm. Like when he won that Evo Grand Finals in twenty fourteen, when you see him cry, it's like you you get emotional as well because you can see how much he wanted it. Yeah. And actually, when I went to Evo in uh, twenty seventeen, he just lost. Uh, he just got eliminated in pools, and he was crying. So what I did was, uh, I took his attention, then asked him to play. Yeah. And as he was wiping his tears, he's like, okay, let's play. <laughs> you know, I guess it's it's a, uh, one thing you can say about people who are really into fighting games mm. is that uh, emotionally and mentally, yeah, they're tough. Yeah. You gotta be tough. Because if you, if you get each loss... If you feel bad for each loss, if you let it get to you a lot, it's hard, you know. Because it's gonna be hard to keep at it. Because if you get, because if yeah, I, I guess you could say that if you if you let ten losses get in the way of you playing better, mm. then you're 
990 sh- losses short yeah. <laughs> of actually getting better. I mean, when you lose, you should just, I mean, when you sleep, when you lose today and you sleep at night, mm-hmm. tomorrow shouldn't, you shouldn't dwell on that loss anymore. Yeah. I mean, you should at least try to look at what happened, but shouldn't um, be too hard on yourself. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing to say. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, it's a. Uh, you know what? What I what what I would say about fighting games, they're. There's they're a great spectacle thing to watch. Mm-hmm. They're super fun to watch, but they're miserable to get better. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a it's, it's a tough. It's tough. <laughs> it's really tough. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's a good, it's a great esport per se, mm. because people know what you're doing, and they'd rather watch you <laughs> than act than try to get that good. Ah. Uh, well, at least for like a lot of spectators, you know, because yeah. uh, it's not to diss on them, but uh, I mean, some people just want to play casually, just yeah. enjoy this uh, the scene. And some people just want to play competitively. It's up to them. It's their choice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's, that's their, it's, it's their expression. It's their freedom. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's move on a bit. Uh, actually, why not? Let's not. Why don't we touch a bit on your your passion for games? Mm-hmm. All in all, so uh, I kind of got the hint from from one of your earlier interviews that you've been playing ever since. Ah, yeah. Uh, I actually got a PS1 at 5 years old. 5 years old? Yeah. <laughs> um, my dad my dad bought me one. Okay. And ever since then, I've been playing. Like, what was your first game? If I remember correctly, it was... Uh, hmm. The Star Wars prequel fighting game. Phantom Menace? No, the... I'm uh, sorry, sequel. Sorry, um, the trilogy. The, first, the original trilogy. Oh, okay. For the PS One, I forgot the title, but because well, because I remember there being a Phantom Menace uh, yeah. game, and it was it was kind of terrible. But yeah, <laughs> looking I mean, back, back was, then it was really good. Yeah, back then it was pretty good, but looking back, yeah, that was pretty terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of game? Oops, silence your phones during interviews. <laughs> anyway, uh, what? So, what kind of games did you get hooked on early on? Uh, when I was six, I was uh, I was able to get uh, Final Fantasy VIII. Ah, okay. And ever since then, I fell in love with the JRPG genre. Really? Okay. So, yeah. uh, which which one would be like your top three? My top three: Suikoden two, Seno Gears, and I would have to say FF eight. Oh, my <laughs> man! Yeah, <laughs> that's those are those are the classics you can get for PS one. Yeah. I, I take it that you don't get as much time to play these JRPGs lately. Lately, yeah. I think, For some reason, I can't play much. No, life happens, you know. Like, yeah. Things get busy. I mean, I'm interviewing you now. You're not playing a JRPG <laughs> right now, right? So, there is stuff like that. But, mm. alright. So, that couldn't have been good news when, during your childhood for your parents. Like, What kind of trouble did you run into? When I was a child? Well... If I have to be honest, uh, my grades kind of <laughs> got affected by me playing a lot. Uh-huh. So I got grounded and I was only allowed to play my PS1 on weekends when there's no school. Okay. That's pretty much it. Like Up uh-huh. until high school, I could only play... No, actually, actually up until college, I could only play on weekends. Uh, so you're making for, up for it now, aren't yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... You you said that you love JRPGs. Are like other games that you play that aren't fighting games? Um, when I was in high school up to college, I was playing Dota. Mm-hmm. In in uh, computer shops. What what kind of role do you play? Uh, like do you play like carry? <laughs> I'd love to say I play carry, but <laughs> I usually just play setter, the the guy who sets the clash. Ah, so initiator. Like, yeah, initiator. Yeah. Like, like Earthshaker or something. Yeah, or yeah. Leviathan. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, you know, you you, do, you might assume that that's what a uh, a, a fighting gamer might take, you know, like <laughs> like the the one that actually hits during the clash. Yeah. So, all right. So Dota, uh, I saw you watching Shadowverse recently. Mm, yeah, Shadowverse is really fun. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's weeb, 
it's wee parts though. <laughs> yeah. But it has, it seems to be doing getting a lot of tie ups, you know. Yeah, the recent one is uh, One Punch Man, right? One Punch Man? Yeah. For real? Okay. Yeah. I'm not tracking these things fast enough. <laughs> All right. So, we're moving on from that a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, versus all these other genres, fighting games seem to be quite the unique beast. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, why do you think that is? Well, for one, it's a competitive game that's not a team game. Okay. So, it's just two persons playing. They're playing against each other. So when you lose, you don't get to place the blame on other factors. You only get to place the blame on yourself. Okay. That's one. And in fighting games, the latency of the game, the lag, Mm -hmm. is really important. Okay. So unlike other games like Dota and, uh, you know, other online games like card games. Yeah. Latency is really important. One so, frame is precious. Yeah. So playing offline is much preferred. Mm-hmm. And hmm, what else? Um, of course, each decision you you make in a fighting game mm-hmm. really it will really take you far. All right. Well, what? Well, let me try to break that down. Like uh-huh. so far, what you seem to be saying is a uh, fighting games are unique because. It's super focused on the individual. Yeah. Like if there's a exactly. if you played bad, it's you played bad. Yeah, it's on you. It's on you. On top of that, uh, it's such a direct experience mm. that it has a lot of meta texts around it. Yeah. So, for example, uh, uh, you fight a person of high reputation in mm. the fighting games. Ideally, you shouldn't care. Yeah. But, you know, the truth is subconsciously, it's playing a bit of a trick on you. So there's a, so there's that. I mean, if I have a brother mm-hmm. uh, and we played fighting games when we were younger a lot, I beat him a lot. He yeah. gets pissed at it. There's, so there's an issue there, like, you know, people getting salty. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it just, it's just a culture of its own. Yeah. Like, uh, somebody told me that fighting games are not esports. They're fighting games. Mm. So it's, and the way you stated a while ago that, uh, and just now that, yeah. uh, it's not a team sport. Yeah, it's really not. So can can you uh, can you give me a bit more insight on what you mean by it's not a team sport? Like obviously, it's just one player, but there are teams that there are uh, people that fly out like you know we're team Philippines of Tekken or uh, something like that. Yeah, but you know if they see each other in the bracket, it's every person for themselves. All right. Even if you're teammates, you have to fight them. You, you want to try to win, of course, right? Yeah. But so, in the end, no matter like, what, no matter if it's your teammate or not, you still have to beat them when you see them in the tournament. But, but don't they at least help each other? Like maybe coaching uh, right before the match or between, yeah. between sets? Yeah, they do. But still, no matter what... Uh, no matter what you study, no matter what your teammate coach on, uh, told you about, your opponent, mm-hmm. it's still on you, right? And when you fight them in the tournament, it's it, it's not like you're going to pull your punches, right? True. So, I, I guess you could say that no matter what kind of influence they put on you, mm. it doesn't make you press buttons better. Yeah. So. It's you just play to win, no matter who. All right. So I guess that's why you seem to be so ballsy about like being able to go out there, uh, not ne- and you know having a support of an esports team doesn't seem to be that significant to you. It is significant in a sense because you know it really helps a lot when traveling. Or is that the main is that the main support that you seek out when when you're trying to compete uh, overseas like? Uh, support for travel? Yeah, of course. So, but, alright, so you started out as Imperium Pro Team. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, unfortunately, it couldn't, I guess we could say it didn't uh, fly out as a business very well. Yeah. So you moved on to Cosmic Corrigans. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that seems to be also the case. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. that happened like a month or two ago. Yeah. Uh, and now you're part of Arbalest. Mm-hmm. So, can you maybe share with us what are these, uh, like, what's going on? Why are, 
what, why can't esports teams seem to maintain themselves? Well, fighting games is a niche genre, right? Mm-hmm. So it's really hard to get the sponsors for it, like unless you're a really big company like um, the Evil Geniuses, right? Mm-hmm. But then again, their main uh, teams are for MOBAs, right? Yeah. And the fighting games is just their a division of theirs, right? So for fighting games, it's not really as lucrative as the other genres. As much as uh, I hate to admit it, but it's true. So, you know, it doesn't seem to garner as much marketing prowess yeah. as the MOBAs. But it is growing. Like, when you look at it, back in uh, 2013, Evo was still in a hotel conference hall, right? Yeah. But now it's in Mandalay, Mandalay Arena. Arena. Yeah. Oh, Mandalay Arena. Right, yeah. right. It's getting bigger, but it's a steady pace. You know, I would like to counter that point about uh, fighting games not being as market market viable. Because mm. EVO was around before esports was around. Ah. And, you know, maybe it wasn't growing as quickly, but... I can tell. I can probably tell you that Evo will still be around, even, even if there's no esports. I think so. Yeah, but do you think it would be as big as it is now? The question. I think the best question is: would be, is it that how important is it to be that big? For me, it is because if it's not that big, then people wouldn't be able to travel as much because there's not much motivation. Mm-hmm. People might not be able to earn as much as motivation to keep playing it. Okay. And yeah. So people will know, not watch it. As so much. maybe we're go- we're going off at a. I'm seeing it as a as more of a as a community event, and you're seeing it more as an industry. Hmm. Maybe that's how that's where we're getting off. At. And I, yeah. I do see your point. Yeah. I do see your point there. As a business, like okay, maybe it's not as viable as a business, hmm. but. I think if people are okay with the current state, and that's probably uh, sustainable, if they yeah. can if they can find a way to keep that sustainable, because I can see how it's sustainable right now. It's sustainable, but not for a lot. Like only the toppest players in the world can only uh, can can afford to can go. afford yeah. Because they're the ones that get sponsored. But mm. you know what? You, what are you gonna do? Sponsor two thousand players to go to Evo? Yeah. <laughs> that's. I don't think that's happening. Yeah. But maybe there's a. But I think the companies making these games, uh, mm. they are making this tour format, yeah. which might make it more viable. And actually, uh, comp- gaming companies right now are trying to make their games more accessible. Mm-hmm. They try to make uh, system mechanics simpler, mm-hmm. so more people would be interested to try it. Yeah, that was obvious with Persona and Dragon Ball. Yeah, and. Um, Right now, Grand Blue as well, right? And BB Tag. Well, I don't know how Grand Blue system works per se. Not quite yet, but yeah. So yeah. far, as much as I know, it's there's an option to get uh, one button specials. Oh, okay. But after you use it, there's a cooldown. Kind of like Rising Thunder. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw that in the trailer. Mm. That's right. Like you, can, you can just hotkey it. Yeah. So and... there are some attempts to make uh, fighting games simpler. But for me, it, I think that's uh, not really a good way to uh, approach it. Mm, what do you mean? Because making games simpler, it might uh, it might attract new players, but it it kind of alienates the old the, the old OG, guard. Yeah, the old guards. All right. I think there was an issue like this in uh, Street Fighter Five, because I watch a lot oh, of yeah. uh, YouTube vids, mm-hmm. and um, Daigo, the top players, talk about these kind of things while they're playing random games. Okay, and it kind of gives you an idea on how they think the 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 genre is going right now. All right, I mean. I would believe I would say that Street Fighter Five does have issues. I mean, coming from Street Fighter Four, mm. like 
uh, how crazy that game is. Yeah. And then you go to Street Fighter Five. I can re- understand, but I think the corporate way, the corporate uh, perception is that they need to kind of reset the ce- the skill ceiling, mm-hmm. so that new players can come in. Yeah. Uh, while I, SF Five, I don't think is a very good example of that, mm-hmm. of resetting the skill ceiling per se. Uh, I think though Arxis is quite good at handling it. Actually, um, Dragon Ball is the one. Um, at first glance, you think it's gonna be easy, right? Yeah. But the more you get into it, the higher the level. It's really unforgiving. Yeah, you uh, lots of nearly near uh, near full uh, full health gun combos. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen it happen. Uh, I don't know, like also like, be tag. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Um. At first glance, it's it looks easy, right? Well, but when you actually play it, it's really, it's really complicated. I think the the running idea they have is people are intimidated because they can't combo. Yeah, that's because pretty much the basic thing they see, right? Yeah, because if you can't do a combo, what are you doing playing fighting games? Mm. So maybe that's why they simplified or made a simplified system for combos. Yeah. But then the VB tag, like, really, you're gonna call that game easy, please? Yeah. Like, I've, uh, uh, knowing how to use the tag system is key. Yeah. Like, all the, the time. I, combos. I've had, uh, I've seen people get in and out of trouble because they know how to use tag there. Yeah. And so I have faith in, with Arxis on, on how they're gonna develop this, this weird, uh, middle ground. Yeah, actually, that's why I'm not really scared about Grand Blue Fantasy being too simple, mm-hmm. because it's made by Arxis. Yeah, we can put our faith in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, back then, my the transition from Guilty Gear to Blaze Blue mm. before this is pre exert Yeah. I I had I had I had my issues about it because mm. it felt way too simple for me. I mean, no FRCs, right? Yeah, no FRCs. Uh, it felt generally slower, mm. all that, but you know, you gave them a bit of time, and actually, you could see that it's uh, it's actually difficult in its own way. Yeah, it, it has is. its own personality, mm. and uh, I respected that. So, for me, when it comes to, I guess, me and you, like, yeah. for when it comes to Arxis, I can respect what they're gonna do. Yeah. So I have faith in it. So, on the case of it being too simple, you know, did you did you watch Core A, Core A gaming? Yeah, I do. So. Uh, I have. They were able to talk about that thing that I uh, that I always thought about on fighting games. Like, mm. uh, it's basically three dimensions. You got the, you have the skill, you have the knowledge, and then you have the like, heart, right? Yeah, heart or guts. I don't yeah. know what to call specifically. Yeah. So, like, how do you like? Do you see it the same way? For me, I'm not really sure to be honest. Really? <laughs> yeah. After all the all the time that you spend, like, you're not quite certain where to put it. Yeah, I mean, it's not really easy to just um, see a people uh, see someone's skill in just three categories. Okay. Yeah. But you know, like I would say that it's a good over. It's a good rough gauge yeah, of. Uh, it's a good rough gauge of uh, of stating where to be good at or uh, what exactly is a fighting game mm. in in my opinion because uh, one of them deals with the game itself. And the other two seem to deal with the, with no, uh, with no, with the players you're yeah. dealing with, because that's that's impossible, right? Yeah, I mean everyone has the their own personalities, mm-hmm. and you can kind of see it by the way they play. Yeah, actually, like you said a while <laughs> ago, that you, that you care about anime games, anime fighters a lot more because they they have so much more expression yeah. in them. And I'm inclined to agree because uh, unique setups, mm. unique ways of playing, you know, you see it the most in anime fighters. Yeah. I so, mean, like, when I fight Tux, yeah. TV Inu, he just doesn't want to give you a turn. <laughs> no, he doesn't. That, yeah. It shows, that that's, that, that's your Zato player right there. Yeah. He doesn't want... Like there's no there's no back and forth mm. for him. Like I'm attacking and that's it. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting. And but but then there's the kind of people that you know they knock you down then they back off. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? They, they try to give you space, observe yeah. you, right? Yeah, exactly. Or you know, 
That's like it was like uh, it's like grade school fighter courtesy. <laughs> I, that's what I would call it because because uh, my because again my brother and I when we played like he was pissed I was doing Oki games on him because mm. why are you gonna why are you doing we're supposed to be playing a fighting game it was like there was there was this weird rule in his head that I'm mm. not supposed to attack him when he's knocked down. Ah yeah. So and you know that happens with kids. That happens mm. with kids. Yeah. And, but you want to play big boy fighting games? <laughs> you good? <laughs> This is it. This is real world time. Yeah, we're gonna learn today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's move on a bit. You you said you've been traveling a lot. Yeah. So you've seen a lot of scenes. Yeah. And I'm guessing that you would say that you you also found the Japanese scene most interesting or most profound. I do. Uh, what what about other places? Do you find something interesting with them? Hmm. Well, for one, the Singapore scene is really uh, interesting because for Dragon Ball, their top player is Seo, uh-huh. and there's also Mark. Mark. Yeah, okay. I think you know him. His complexity. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there's two of them, right? Mm-hmm. But their local scene is pretty much inactive. I would I would predict that the Singapore scene is pretty small. It it is. It's really small. Okay. And the thing is, Seo just plays online. Really? Yeah, but he's really good. Like, it's like a... You could... Uh, someone in, describe playing him as playing against a Japanese player. Okay. He's that good. It's really interesting because... For us uh, Filipinos, our internet isn't really that good, right? Yeah. So, we tend to play offline. But seeing Singapore... Um, Singapore has the best internet, man. Singapore has the best internet, right? So, it's kind of the opposite of uh, our scene in a way. Okay. Because they have access to online, but not really as much offline. Yeah, because uh, it's a small place, so yeah. And that I can uh, I can admire that because you you tend to just uh, make do with what you have, right? Yeah. And he's they're still really good. You know, you know, the way you've been coming out of me is it, you. It's like a, it's like you got a Ryu story going on in your head. Ryu like, story. You know, like, no, okay, this is not meant to to deceive. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> people, I have this, I have this reputation of saying things that people think I'm dissing them. Uh, <laughs> anyway, eh, don't worry. Anyway, because uh, you seem to always be focused on the idea of that it's the path to mastery that that matters most. Mm. It's like the the fact that. Uh, you you get stronger, you get better as a player. Yeah, that's what matters most, and uh, it seems it, it sounds like that's what you really uh, value coming yeah. out of fighting games. It's like you're a better player. Yeah, you're uh, you overcome your obstacles. Yeah. So, and considering that you know you're we, one of your most unique uh, uh, the most unique things you've witnessed is this guy who can kind of hold up in a, in a place with fast internet mm. and just become an excellent player and you find that admirable as well. Yeah. So, because actually that does sound pretty difficult. Yeah, and I know because there's lag. Not, not only because you're taking on things alone. Yeah. And like, and if it's an inactive scene, Well, like, the thing with uh, Seo is he reaches out to other players from different countries as well. Okay. I, I mean, even I myself asked him some stuff about Dragon Ball. Oh. Yeah, he's really easy to talk to, ask things. So, you know, he's kind of, I guess you could say he's Mr. Worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, compared to, like, seeing all these other scenes, what mm. do you think would be nice nice uh, pieces of wisdom to to pick up from these other scenes that the, the local scene might want to find out? Um, try to focus on improving the whole scene. Not just yourself. Mm-hmm. Because if you help others improve, they get better. It also benefits you as well. Because you're going to be forced to get better as well. Because you're fighting better players. Yeah. Because, yeah. I can, it's, I can just a, it's just a back and forth mm-hmm. of improvement. I, I guess it's, yeah, you mentioned this in the Japanese scene. So, mm. so you know, sharing knowledge freely. Because I guess we we have uh, there's a culture mm. in I guess in most fighting games things that you kind of keep your your secret technique. You know? yeah. It's and actually 
Actually, it's really weird because in fighting games, you're all you're all alone, right? It's mm. every ma- it's every man for himself. Mm-hmm. But then again, you also have to share. Yeah. What you know. Or because if. All right. So getting back to the secret technique thing, because there are people that are like that. Like uh, they they tend to keep a tech mm. until it's time to bring it out. I mean, it's not wrong. That approach isn't wrong either, but it won't benefit you in the long run. It might give you a win right now, but once they know that tech, mm-hmm. it might not work again. So you, it's like uh, it's not wrong, but it's flawed. Yeah, so, yeah. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't rely on that entirely. All right, so maybe a bit here and there, mm. but it's not your long-term plan. Yeah. All right. So uh, I guess you could, you could play a bit for sh- for showmanship, or you know, it's a brand new game. You got mm. a pocket tech. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a, not wrong. It's okay. All right. Speaking of wrong, mm. so we had a ah. we had a bit of a. Uh, I it wasn't again. It wasn't intended, but it turned mm. into a bit of a spat on Facebook. Yeah. Right. So uh, let's hear that story of yours because mm. you seem to really resound with the saying ah. that is it wrong to be strong? Yeah. So, and you know, I was wondering what does he mean by this. I'm not. I'm not sure what's going on. Here. So anyway, that turned into a long Facebook thread, yeah. which like this was not my intention. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, but we moved on. Mm. Uh, when how did that happen? Like why why did you suddenly feel like asking that question? Ah, uh, because hmm, it happened in uh, 2016 after I won Southeast Asia Majors. Okay. After I won, I kind of noticed that a lot of people would. Uh, how should I put it? Hmm. They kind of attribute. They kind of attributed my win to my character. Really? Yeah, some people. It's well, not that they're uh, trying to be mean. Mm-hmm. It's just that what they think. Because so, uh, this blaze blue, right? Yeah. So you were using Mew twelve. Yeah. Was it? Well, Mew twelve was indeed a high tier character back then, but. Mm. You know, like kind of like Dark Phoenix in MBC three. She's kind of she's hard to use. Yeah, n- there's there's a real risk to it, and well, it's not like it's not counterable. Yeah. Right. So anyway, go on. And back then, I was still how should I put this? I was still kind of defensive. Uh, I mean, I, should, I, I guess you could say that when people commented that, oh yeah, Newtop is really strong. Yeah. It wasn't Alden is really strong. You yeah. felt kind of slighted. Yeah, kind of. I mean, back then, I was still new to the competitive scene, right? Mm-hmm. Well, relatively new, but back then, I was still uh, not used to getting the spotlight. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I kind of got slighted, but not much, looking back at it. It was just a joke to the to my friends who keeps complaining about my character. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, I don't know, I, should, is it really just a joke now? Like... Uh, you you like you you made it your tag mm. in on your Facebook page. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> is it wrong to be strong? One, two, three. Like, maybe it's a joke. It gained traction. That's uh, <laughs> that's one thing. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did gain traction. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, and I think it's you know, is it? It sounds like being gaudy or you know, my abang at mm. first, but ah, uh, yeah. Con- con- but considering how yeah. you keep keep talking about self improvement and all that. Mm. It's not really a. Uh, it's not really. It's not really that, is it? Yeah, because um, to some people, I might come across as mayabang, but then again, as much as I'm proud of what I'm doing, I'm mm-hmm. proud of my achievements. I still aim higher, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't settle for what I have. Like I keep improving. Like you would you would you say that it's it's not that you're. It's not that you like to brag about your achievements, you're just not ashamed of them. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, you were really able to pull it off and it wasn't easy, so mm. you, you kind of have the right, right? Not like, really. I'm, I'm not saying that I have the right. It's just... I can do it, like, if I want to. Uh-huh. I'm not really pushing my achievements to other people. It's just it's just there. It happened. All right. So And I'm proud of it. Okay, so it, so I guess people might think you're like, uh, 
people might want to to, to think that you should be playing it humble, but you don't quite agree no, with that. No, I don't. If you're happy with what you've achieved, mm-hmm. you can be proud of it. And and if your friend is proud of what they've achieved, okay. If you're a real friend, you should be happy for them. All right. So I let's have let's let, let's uh, define that a little better, mm-hmm. right? Uh, where would you draw the line between like being like proudly holding to on to your achievements versus uh, uh, you know throwing it around like the uh, in a way that's not good? Ah, uh, when you keep dwelling in your past achievements without improving, without mm-hmm. aiming higher. All right, so there's kind of an expiration date on that kind yeah. of. Yeah, I see. All right. So I guess we're getting around to the end of the interview. I didn't expect that to be the last question, actually. <laughs> but but it, I guess it fits. It's kind of we're we're getting up towards the end. Yeah. So is, so is it wrong to be strong? I guess the answer is no. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah, is not of wrong. Not. <laughs> but but of course that there's also a, there's also a certain sense of responsibility that you you eventually hold, especially when people start looking up to you. Mm. So. Uh, Fair enough. Also, it's something I ask to pump myself up. Okay. Because when I say, is it wrong to be strong? I feel like I can beat anyone. Really? Yeah. Does, is it like you're questioning if you, why you're there kind of thing? It's like I'm acknowledging that I can do this. Mm-hmm. So it can happen. I can win. Cause and that won't be a fluke. Yeah, because if you go into a match thinking you'd lose, it's going to affect your play. You're going to overthink, you're going to fumble, you're right. going to drop your combo. So, just to, I guess to, to frame it a little tighter with what you say, mm. like it's not wrong for you to pull off a great combo. It's not wrong for you to, to get around, maybe to maybe a full set. No, it's not wrong for you to be confident. Right. Mm. That's exactly. That's. I guess that's what you exactly meant by that. Yeah. You said a while ago that you don't see yourself doing anything else right now. Mm. But you know, maybe three years, five years down the well, line. Well, that's only for now. Um, see, maybe in five, ten years, I might start a business. Mm-hmm. But right now, I haven't thought of any business that I'm passionate about. Okay. To get into, so. Yeah, that is important. I'm just focusing on what I can, like. I'm just focusing on fighting games because right now that's what I'm passionate about but that may change in the future you know well actually maybe it's already changing because you mentioned a while ago that you're planning to do streaming on the side streaming on the so, side you, know, you kind of diversify you're kind of not trying to put all your eggs in one basket yeah in a sense I mean, so if it maybe if it goes better that way mm. maybe you'll go there yeah you know? and you know, it's not it's not unlikely especially yeah. if you Especially if you feel like uh, you like talking to people while you're playing. Because if you're gonna get go all in into anything, it's still a good idea to have a plan B. Okay. Yeah. Because I think this is especially unique to fighting games, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Like uh, reaction time, your coordination with your hands, that might deteriorate later on. Right. That I'm not sure of yet. Because there's there are players like Sako, Daigo. Mm-hmm. They're still pretty good despite their age, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it might happen, you know. <laughs> you yeah. never know. So, so I guess you you do have you, you at the back of your head you kind of have a rough plan B. Yeah. But you're not quite in that space yet that it's time to think about it. Mm. Yeah. All right. So you, so actually your plans are just to improve the fighting games. How how do you do that? How do you plan to do that? Just. Well, for now, I'm planning to go to Japan and train there. This, this is the best thing I can think of if I want to improve right now. You're doing the proverbial bundok training. The bundok training. <laughs> yeah, dude. Going to the mountain. <laughs> yes. The, I don't know, like, because you're going to a far off place, and uh, for how long? Depends. Might, uh, might be two weeks, one month. Depends on the and it, and resources. It's, and it's gonna be all like. I want to, it's get good time. Yeah, get good time. No, no sightseeing, just play. Wow. Like, <laughs> so, uh, I guess you came into contact with, with somebody that you might be able to, uh, 
to share a house with or something and uh, actually no <laughs> not quite there yet yeah i'm planning to look for a share house okay and they just live there wow you're really just doing this on your own yeah i thought i thought that since you know you're you got a esports team like not very popular esports team more but less Mm. Well, but I thought that they, you know, help you find people to spar with. No, I mean, sparring partners isn't really a problem. There's an abundance of them in Japan. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just need to find a way to live there for... It's more of a place to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> I just need a roof above my head. <laughs> Alright, yeah, you see, you've, you've gone to Japan, with, like, what, twice? No, nah, just once. Once? Yeah. Oh, North Rome. Okay. Uh, how was that tournament for you? Evo Japan? It's really, hmm. I would say it's more stuck than the Evo in Las Vegas. Well, of course it would be. Yeah. <laughs> but production value, of course, goes to America. Evo America. Yeah. yeah. But, but the caliber of the players is really, it's Evo Japan. All right. So I guess you, you, in a sense, like if, if you want to, if you want to get really good, you have to go where the best are, mm. because. Uh, I, what you're saying is that Ronnie be strong. You're not gonna be, you're not done settling for placing high. Yeah, I mean, if I have to be honest, if I only wanted recognition or uh, approval from my peers, I would have stopped when I won Southeast Asia majors. But that's not what I want. I just wanna play. I just wanna place the best that I can in the in the best tournaments all right so you first you just ryu it's a ryu story <laughs> you, you, you want to get this how you want to see how far you can take it yeah for real like that's yeah. that's the bottom line of it all yeah you want to see how far that's pretty that's pretty that's pretty cool man <laughs> no because uh, a lot of people like they'd have other concerns or something you know Mm. Uh, but it seems like you you decided to work all that out because you're already balancing your time with your family. Uh, yeah. You you've decided, I guess you decided later on that a uh, regular job isn't for you. Mm. And at least you, not for now. Yeah, but, I mean you still you still have a diploma. Yeah, and you already <laughs> have work you already have work experience, so it's not impossible for you. Yeah. So it's it's still there. Mm. All right, so that's the future for now. Like you. You might find out in somewhere in the streets of Japan with a duffel bag. <laughs> Maybe a beard. <laughs> and a karate gi. <laughs> <laughs> Wandering from arcade to arcade. Which is actually pretty viable. Like, you, um, mm. Hopefully you make it to Mikado. Yeah, I, I'll i try to take the time to get there. Like, there's like, because my friend Dukes once said, mm. there's tech, then there's Mikado tech. You yeah. Know? yeah. It's And when I saw the matches, like, for real, man. Because it's just it's not just all tech. It's yeah. also the decision making. True. Like when to use those techs, what techs counters the tech you're using. You yeah. Know? Uh, like it's That's what I plan to learn when I go to Japan. In in my opinion, like I don't know if people would agree with this, but mm. uh it's like a very it, in the end when you're when you're at the very top of your game versus playing against another person at the very top of his game. Mm. It's it's a it's a very strange poker match, right? You got they got cards, you got cards, yeah. and it's all about it's a matter of knowing when to play it, mm. and uh, based on what you see there, what you're gonna what, what are you gonna put down, yeah. right? So it's it's kind of like that for me, and that's why it get, it's really fascinating for me to watch, yeah, especially can... when people are uh, you're waiting for that moment when people take it up to eleven, mm. like you said, they're suddenly playing better than they've ever been, yeah. And that's you're in like, the zone. Yeah, the zone. Like you can't believe it, and sometimes the person can't believe it themselves. Yeah, like, they they actually got it that far. All right, so we've arrived at the end of the interview. Mm. You haven't stepped up, big job. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, just kidding. Uh, so you know, given your life experiences, mm-hmm. like, would there be pieces of advice that you might want to offer up to people? Like so far, what you've learned. Especially since you've had the unique experience as a Filipino gamer, mm. going around the country without necessarily relying on uh, other people to to or other entities to support your career. Well, it's gonna be hard to say my advice because not everyone has the same circumstances, right? Uh-huh. But based on my experience, I would say just take a leap. 
Right. Just do what you want. If you're not in a good place right now, try to change things up. Yeah. All right. So you know, if you want to, if you want to, to if you want to reach something, you gotta reach for it. Yeah. Be honest. Tell your family what you wanna do. Okay. They may they might disagree, but at least you tried, right? And and if your circumstances don't quite agree, yeah, like maybe there's some something within your power that you can change about that. Yeah, or maybe just try to weather the storm for a bit. Maybe in the future the opportunity would come. All right. Mm. I mean, it's not like opportunities are always available to you. Yeah. And you've weathered such storms, so to speak. I wouldn't say they're storms. Well, you know, like, who would have thought, right? Who would have thought that uh, a boy from Bicol, mm. <laughs> that that grad that just goes to school in San Beda, would uh, incidentally fight like one of the tougher people in in the Philippines for fighting games, and eventually beat them on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, I just enjoyed playing fighting games, and it just turns out that I got better at it. Mm-hmm. In, Things like that happen. All right. <laughs> well, you know, it's been fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are officially at the end of the interview. Is there, is there like anything else you'd like to impart? Uh, Greetings, no. anything like that? Hmm? Greetings, promotions, anything like that? Like, uh, do you do you maintain a Twitter or something? Like that? Uh, yeah. Um, you, th- you guys can follow me on Twitter. It's... Wait, let me double check. <laughs> I'm sorry. Obvious, obviously, fighter, fighting games is not the best at marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, it's at Alden Jacob. Alden Jacob, all right. Yeah. So, actually, you you post tech almost every week, not mm. if not every day. I see you do that, and I'm like, I'm dead if I'm go- if I get caught in that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and you do you post that on Twitter, mm. or is it more on Facebook? I usually just retweet the tech I see on Twitter, just oh, so okay. I can keep track of them. Mostly, I post my techs on FB. Okay. I actually have a page. It's ARB Alden. All right. So there you have it. Facebook. ARB Alden and then Alden Jacob at Twitter. Yeah. Team is Arbus Esports. And so far, one of our top contenders for the fighting game scene. All right. So this is the end of the podcast. Again, this is Alan Brainroof Files. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you again next time.